you're very welcome to Jerry's DIY. So what have I got planned today? Well today I'm going to make a start on turning that propane bottle and that 55 gallon oil drum into a free water heater. I'm going to burn waste oil in this little unit. This is a waste oil burner that I've shown in previous videos. So if you want to see how to make that playlist up here somewhere and um, you know you can get to build one of these yourself. This is brilliant but this is kind of the heart of what I'm going to make. So I've got some cutting and drilling to do first before I make a start on this. I'm going to cut a hole in the top of the oil drum and allow the, the bottle to go up and down freely. But a nice tight fit and then I have to kind of figure out a way of sealing it. I've got to cut a hole, a six inch hole in the side of this so we can exhaust the flue from it. I'm going to drill a couple of holes in the top of this so we can fill it with water and have an outlet as well. But before I do that with the propane bottle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to neck it, I'm going to take the, the collar off it, I'm going to take the valve out of it, fill it with water and pour Jenny air into the system. That way I'm safe if I'm drilling or you know putting holes in that sort of thing. So here we go. So it takes no time at all to light these stoves as lots of you have seen in previous videos. Here we go, look. This is the burner. I won't go through it, but this is the recent burner I made. The little V groove in it that goes under the oil filler pipe. And this one with the modifications that just goes over the top. That's it, it's ready for action now, even at that. Okay, so I just slide it in. That's it in. There's very little kerosene in this. I'm going to give it all to it. So I'll squirt it in. Uh, people have been asking what happens if it goes down in here or whatever. It doesn't matter. I, I could actually light a fire down there and it would just still all go up the chimney. So it doesn't matter. Um, courage. And look, it doesn't even light because it's cold out here. But once I get a surface hot and starts to vaporize, then it'll burn no problem. So there you go. Okay, so now we're burning purely kerosene. And there's not an awful lot of it in there. And what happens now is that kerosene is going to heat this oil that's coming in. So, I'll just move everything away. And we'll trigger the oil. Okay, there's the oil going in. Get a nice skinny stream. And nothing happens, okay? So we close the door. <laughs> I keep playing it, don't I? I won't take this time. Okay, so there you go. Stove is lit. Um, I'm just going to wait on the temperature to come up. I'm going to go inside. 20 minutes from now or so, I'm going to come out. And out here will be warm. There's nothing for me to do. Just wait on the heat to, to arrive, if you like. I've got, um, you can see the bucket, you can. That bucket's about half full of oil. Uh, that'll do me, you know, for a couple of hours, no problem. And, um, and this thing will be red hot soon enough. So, okay, see you in a few minutes. Now, it's cold and dark out at the moment. I have my stove lit and I'm, I'm good to go. It's nice and warm in here. Um, I have to fan off because it interferes with the, um, you know, the audio. But um, yeah, I don't need it. I'm being radiated heat on here. It's probably three or four degrees outside, if that, and falling. And uh, you know, cold walls on the shed and everything. And yeah, I'm in here, no problem. So the plan now is I've, you know, I've drawn a circle around this, around the base of the tank, you know, the propane tank. Um, I'm gonna lift that down, I'm gonna put a jigsaw in, I'm gonna cut a hole out big enough for that to slide down into. When we get that far, we're gonna put a hole in the bottom of it um, big enough for my burner. So the problem is my burner is actually in the stove at the moment, the one I intend using on this. Um, <laughs> that gets a bit awkward. Um, anyway, so I get that far with this and we'll see where we go from there. What I might do is put my older burner in the stove to continue on the heat. It's nice to be working out here with a bit of heat and not being able to see your own breath. But anyway, look, we'll get on with it. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Now, this has been open to the atmosphere for a long time, this barrel in the scrapyard. You've got to be very careful with it. You know, if this had gasoline or something like that, it, you know, it's bye bye. Anyway, I know this one is weathered. There's water in it. It had oil in it at one stage, but only oil. You know, so here we go. I'm just going to stick a hole in it here. And I'm going to start it. That's just the starter for the pizza. There you go. 
So one circle. Now I have the top already off this. You know, I can put my hand in here, no problem. It's big enough for this. So I've done that already. So now I'm going to cut a little hole, a square hole. I don't know, it's about 14 inches by maybe 10 inches high. Uh, I'm not going all the way to the bottom because if something drips out of the oil burner, you know, say we get some oil spillage or something, you know, I've got a couple of inches, well, three inches of room at the bottom to catch it. You know, and given the capacity of this barrel, that's quite a lot of oil. Uh, I would never get that anyway. So I'm going to drill a hole in this, use the jigsaw, just chop it out. Here we go. Safety force when you can do it. Um, literally, I'm going to drop that bottle in there, stick a big burner unit under it. If it's full of water, it can do nothing else other than get hot. Like when you put a saucepan on your, on your cooker at home, your stove, you know, whatever you've got for cooking on. You know, you stick it on the, on the burner ring and that's it, it gets hot. That's what we're going to do here. It's just a taller pot. I know what it is, about three and a half feet, four feet. Now, I've cut the bottom door in this and that allows me to put my burner unit, this thing, in and out, no problem. Okay, so this will be a door, you know, it'll open and close like this, very easy, okay, a couple of hinges on that and that's it, done, right, nothing, nothing spectacular. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to take the neck off that bottle, the collar, I don't need it, so I'm going to take that off, when I get that off then I'm going to pull the valve out of it and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, here we go. Okay, so there's the neck off the bottle. We're going to get the valve off the bottle. I'll show you how I do that now. So the valve uses a standard right hand thread to connect into the top of the bottle, you know, the top of the propane tank. And we're going to just undo it by winding it the same as you would undo a Coca-Cola, you know, lid. So all I do is I get a nail bar, I put it through the bottom, like that. Then when it comes around, it locks against the floor. So I'm turning this anti-clockwise, which means as I undo this, everything is going to lock that direction. So, we're going to put the big pipe wrench on it now. So, this is a 24 inch Stilson, 24 inch pipe wrench. And we're going to put this on the top. And we're just going to undo it this way. Here we go. You really need to know there's no gas in this bottle. Don't mess with this, don't take shortcuts. Okay, propane bottle, and we're safe. We're going to fill it with water now, uh, and then I'm going to do some more work on it. Okay, so here we go. Okay, absolutely full of water. So, so this is not the most economical way to make a waste oil boiler. You know, some way of heating hot water, making lots and lots of free hot water. Uh, there are better ways of doing it, and, you know, I can explore some of those. But given that, you know, we have a propane bottle scrapped, an oil drum scrapped, um, you know, maybe $5 or whatever worth of, metal uh, in the burner on the, on the ground here, this thing, you know, you know, given how simple this was to make, you know, the whole assembly, you know, $20, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe less. Now, on top of that, you've got to pay for electricity, welding rods, grinding discs, whatever, you know, but you won't go out and buy one of these things for the sort of money we can make one for. Uh, my shed heater at the moment is one of these things. And, you know, it's five degrees or four or five degrees outside centigrade, whatever that is in Fahrenheit. I don't know, 30 maybe. No, more. Uh, maybe 35 or, or 40 maybe. But it's cold enough, not warm enough to be in here in a t-shirt. And yet, here I am. I'm actually sweating. <laughs> So this is a one inch standard pipe tread, okay? Right hand tread, and what I'm going to do is put that on there and weld it in position. That allows me then to put standard pipe fittings onto the cylinder or onto the propane bottle. So the other connection here is a three quarter uh, standard, British standard pipe tread, BSPT, okay? Three quarter. So I'm going to reuse that. I, I did think initially it was going to be some sort of obscure tread and I would, um, I would have just done something similar to this. I would have just welded something on top. But as it stands, I can use it. Now, the shed is in bits at the moment. Um, it's had lots of activity lately and no tidying up. 
Okay, so this is a circle. It's a socket for um, you know stainless steel elbow for some flue, and I'm going to put this in a hole that I put in the back of the oil drum. So if I just push a socket into a hole in the oil drum, it'll just hemorrhage air. And uh, but if I make a socket, weld this in, and push the the uh, the elbow into this, it'll be good. And it costs nothing. I, I rolled this myself a few minutes ago, and I'm just going to stitch the seam now. So here we go. I better turn this down because I was welding heavier stuff with it a minute ago. Okay, here we go again. Take two. Okay, so that's it. Or shinne, as we say in Irish. That's it. So we're, um, that's the weld. I'm just going to put that on the inside of this socket now. I'm just going to move you so you can see it. Okay, so hopefully you can see into that now. So this is still red hot. I'm only after welding it. And I'm going to have to persuade it in there a little bit with the hammer. And, um, and that's it. it I can't touch it, it's red hot. So look, essentially, this elbow goes into that. And it, it, now, that'd be great if it was 90 degrees. I don't actually have a 90 degree one, but uh, it doesn't matter if I come across one or buy one, um, we can do it. But that in there, it's just gonna flop around and fall out. So, but if I put it into my socket, you know, it'll be grand. It'll be okay. Just, um, can't touch the top of the socket and I need to make it a bit more round now in a second but essentially that's it look and the socket goes in there and then the elbow can just push into the socket so I'm gonna make all that happen now okay so I have a bit of welding to do on this this socket if you like is coming out at an angle what I'm going to do is just tip it on the top with the welder and then pull it straight squared off put a couple of tacks around it that'll hold it in position and, um, and that'll be it so, okay, so I'm just going to go and do that. So, just see if we have, okay, we have contact. All right, so I'm going to put one on the top of this and then swing the bottom out. Here we go. Right, so. right, it's pretty good. Just eyeballing it. I'm going to put a couple of spots on it. Okay, one the other side now. It's coming out pretty square, so okay. All right, so that's it held in position. And what I might do now is just light the cylinder sideways. That just makes it easier for me to weld, to weld it. Okay, so that's as far as I'm going to take it tonight. I've got a socket for my 5 inch flue on the back of this. Essentially what I'm going to do is put a you know, socket into it and go up as high as I need to go. Um, you know, just to get rid of the fumes and so on. I don't expect for there to be any smoke. There shouldn't be any smoke. But anyway, here's the deal, right? I've just welded the socket. It's still red hot. This is 5 inch pipe. And that's the deal. You know, it fits in there. You can set it up. I don't need any, you know, fiberglass rope or whatever. It's a nice tight fit. The fumes then, when I light this thing, this is full of water. The gases come up around it, you know, red hot gases, burning gases, come up around the outside of it, head for this flue and up into the atmosphere. You know, so, and uh, <coughs> there's the front of it with a little door on it and such. Let's make it a bit better looking. Right, so there's a little hatch there. I put my stove, hmm, if I can find it.
This is just the contents of what was in it. There was just water and a bit of stuff. So look, this is my waste oil burner. This is one of a couple, or one of a few, and it just goes in there, it lives under this uh, propane bottle, okay? So I've yet to set up a kind of a decent setup that I can just put it in and hook it up to the air supply. Air supply is gonna come in through the side of it, and uh, this will probably sit just that little bit higher. So no issue anyway, I can just put lugs on this. And I'll put a bit of a flange around this then so that when it's set up, when I drop it down, I get a nice tight seal against the top of the, uh, the, the oil drum. You know, so that all the gases that I generate inside this unit go where I want them to go, which is out that flue. So there's a pipe to go to the bottom of this propane bottle. I'm gonna fill it with water, gonna drive the water in, and take the water out of the top. The, the pipe that goes to the bottom is gonna be the feed, so that when I drive cold water in, I don't just mix it up here. The cold water actually pushes the hot water out. And uh, we'll say I'll put a couple of thermostats on it so we can see you know, contents, temperature, all that sort of stuff. So there'll be a bit of fun in the next one. So provided this thing makes hot water, and I expect that it will, you know, I haven't seen one of these before, so <laughs> it will work, you know, everything I, I've gone at so far has worked. So um, I'm in my shed now, you know, lots of heat because of one I made before, the same as the burner I just showed you. Okay, so we're going to make lots of hot water in the next video, um, but the build is very simple. We're going to generate, put a, a big fire <laughs> under this thing, we're going to fill this thing with water. Um, it's going to be open vented, so we're not going to explode anything, but... Um, yeah, and we'll see now. We'll definitely make heat, and we'll see what sort of rate we can make heat at. I have, um, I have an idea for version 2 as well, that I can generate more hot water quicker. But this will certainly generate hot water, and for what? For, for very little money. So that's it. If you liked the video, please thumbs up. Subscribe down here. That'd be great. If you've been with me before and you've already subscribed, thanks very much. The support is deadly. Um, okay, and if you've, you know, if you have any questions or whatever, put them in the comments below. Or if you've done one of these or something like it before, let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now. Good luck.